artists are well known for their mastery in her nascent nature and giving meaning to what is seemingly meaningless in our eyes. However, there is more to the work they do, bringing change to people's lives and transforming communities through their work. And Bosco Simwe from the Batwa community in Chisoro is one of such artisans who helped in reshaping the lives of Batwa indigenous people after the wife from Win Impenetrable Forest for conservation purposes. We go in the forest, access resources whereby we could go for hunting, we get meat, we could go and get fruits. Uh, we could go get some medicine because at first we could not go in the markets. We could not go uh, in the. We could not go in the hospitals. We could only benefit from the forest. But when we were evicted from the forest, then we started these activities because the forest is helping us uh, by uh, visitors from outside. They always come to visit our forest, see some animals. Then whenever they come, then we. We, we got a sort of maybe making some crafts so that if they are going for those animals or when they are coming back from the forest, they can at least buy something from us and we are living. The artist and community leader, Bosco Simwe, who is representing the Rushaga community of artists at the Expo, explains how art was used to break the divide and is being used to have the Bachiga and the Batwa live together side by side. When they came in, uh, from the forest and they came into our environment, they found it difficult because in the forest they could uh, do other activities, not like the ones that they were made to do. In the forest they could do hunting for men and women could go for fruits gathering. But when they came into the competitive environment, they found it difficult. So we started uh, engaging them into such activities uh, to make the crafts that maybe they can earn a living. Uh, because now they, are, they no longer go in the forest, they only benefit from the community activities. Bosco has already been to four art festivals and expos on behalf of the community he leads, where he meets art leaders and buyers, and the benefits have been as enormous as the years have gone by. At this expo, he expects to collect as many orders for his community as possible. Uh, participating in such an expo, uh, we get uh, customers, uh, not only selling here, but we always bring our products here. Then we get some contacts from different people from different parts of the world. Then uh, after from here, then they make orders with us. Then we get the items and send to them. That is one of the benefits. And another one, uh, when we come here, we always visit other people. We see what they do, what is different from what we do. So when we reach home, then we start practicing such activities. So now uh, we started with gorillas and the baskets, but now we are doing other activities, like uh, some crafts from cow horns, some crafts from uh, clay, and other things, from papers, paintings, and other things. So I guess in five years to come, or six years, we shall be far better. Sarah Kabugo is another such artisan, proud to serve her community in many unique ways, from training women in the making of crafts to providing financial support for a woman's group she helped establish during the COVID-19 pandemic. Her efforts have seen women transform their lives, as she explains. That many women out there, uh, most of the time women that are home mamas, they face a challenge, and most of the time being a pastor, uh, they always come to me. I've got an opportunity to share the women problems. Naye, uh, I've got to. I've realized that uh, most of the challenges, the challenges that these women are having, is because they lack money in their pockets. The art and crafts industry forms a bigger part of the community-based tourism enterprises and depends heavily on the tourism industry. Paul Obega, a field officer from Uganda Community Tourism Association, an umbrella body for the enterprises, explains ways the crafts industry is reaping from the tourism industry. Make a craft and sell it, so almost all the money comes back to the producer. So that touches, if say a visitor visited, uh, let's take an example of uh, Kidepo, and bought maybe 20 pieces. These 20 pieces, uh, chances are high they are not done by one person. So if you, 
you've taken 20 and let's take an example that 20 people sat and produced maybe the beads and all that so all that money trickles down to the families because you're having one person producing but once they get say 20,000 or 30,000 it helps them to run their families you know buy food soap and all that uh, the groups which which form as uh, community-based tourism enterprises uh, to provide maybe the music dance and drama the crafts demonstration as the tourism products the money paid to them part of it stays as a, 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 the operations money but the other money goes to to the community robert ndiamhachi and ashraf nduga for btm news today